Hello and welcome to the first episode of a brand new series in Stellaris Distant Stars where we are playing as the United Syndicates of Earth. Uh, so we're starting as Earth humans, <clears throat> similar to what we did in Star Kaiser, but this is operating under the assumption that Earth was kind of united by a decentralized anarcho-syndicalist type of government. Uh, so they are fanatic egalitarian and materialists environmentalists with an idealistic foundation, so kind of um, laterally organized eco-socialism sort of uh, talented, communal, conservationist, and sedentary are our, um, our species traits. Uh, and we are a direct democracy, which is, there's really not a way to model a, an anarcho-syndicalist government um, in Stellaris, but RP-wise, I guess we, we could say that we have something resembling, you know, true democratic centralism as far as how decisions are made on an interstellar scale, at least. Um, and then on the planets, there's all the little, you know, individual unions and syndicates doing their own thing. Um, I have not seen any of the Distant Stars com content yet, uh, so that's all going to be totally new. Um, no spoilers, please. Uh, I've never opened an L-Gate. I've never even watched a stream of somebody opening an L-Gate. Uh, so I'm going to be discovering that for the first time. And if you are new to Distant Stars yourself, we'll be discovering it together. Looking forward to seeing uh, what that's going to be. We're playing on Captain Difficulty um, with a medium number of empires, very low hyperlane density, and we're on the Captain difficulty, which is a little bit a little bit harder than the old normal, from what I understand. Um, uh, I'm TJ, by the way, if you've not watched our channel before. Brianna is going to be in the background working Hello. on some graphics and stuff. As we've mentioned uh, on a couple other series, um, uh, DM and Chloe are, are moving more towards other parts of the business, so it's... It's going to be largely the two of us. You're going to hear a lot on, on YouTube these days. And Casey. Um, and Casey, the Lord about... Dog. Although, oh. yeah, she just got got uh, got to go outside, so she's probably not going to be too vocal. She's pretty pretty content. So we'll go ahead and start uh, building up our home system. Um, we're going to start exploring. I am going to try to pay a little more attention to the anomalies than I usually do, because I know they added a bunch of new ones, so... Um, I'll try to read as many of the anomalies as possible, unless I'm absolutely sure it's one I've seen a million times before. Uh, research speed's always a good first tech. Biolabs. Using your science to get more science is usually my, my opening move. Um, and we're using the uh, Commonwealth of Man name list, which I think still gives us, still gives us a pretty good... Um, spread of like potential cultural names you can get but uh a little different flavor to it i suppose we're gonna go ahead and set up a trading hub here and uh yeah we got our got our nice little home system we're gonna unpause the game and we're gonna go see what new stuff there is to discover uh, to put a little bit of a wrinkle in it, uh, the United Syndicates of Earth subscribes to uh, Leon Trotsky's uh, philosophy of permanent revolution. So uh, if, if we encounter other empires where people are being exploited, our goal is going to be to um, declare war on them to overthrow their government and install a, install a syndicalist government. So we're not going to be pacifists this run. Let's see. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I think I'm going to prioritize science a little harder than I, I usually do. I want to learn as, as much as we can as fast as possible. I also want to go in and uh, set all of our policies and stuff real quick. Um... Yeah, ideology casts a spelly. That's what we want. Food stockpiling, we're going to keep it on minimal for now. Orbital bombardment. 
I'm going to keep that on selective. We don't want to kill the workers of other civilizations, only their corrupt rulers. Um, resettlement's prohibited. First contact, peaceful. Border status. That's actually an interesting one. We'll keep it open for now. Slavery, of course, is prohibited. And purges, I'm going to say, are going to be prohibited as well. Trying to be trying to be uh, roughly in line with anarchist thinking of the uh, 19th century, and um, we are gonna pass the map the Stars Edict as well. We'll hold off on building up the fleet too much for now because uh, <coughs> I usually don't bother until we have a uh, something to actually do with it. I do have a little bit of a cold, so I apologize for uh, the coughing. As I said on uh, the E4 series, if you haven't been watching that, I think I caught the Zeke virus at Paradox Con. Zeke was, was kind of sick, and... Uh, oh, did I give him a bad order? I did give him a bad order. I think I caught that from him, but... As always, I'd, I'd rather... Uh, I'd rather get to hang out with Zeke and then come home sick than not get to hang out with Zeke, so I think it's a pretty good trade-off. So Alpha Centauri is now modeled as a trinary star system now, which is astronomically accurate for any of any of you that were, uh, well actually, it's, it's technically a binary system, but they're counting Proxima Centauri as part of the same star system. I'm not sure how accurate that is because I'm not an astronomy expert, but um, I don't actually know if Proxima Centauri is within the gravitational sphere of influence of Alpha Centauri or if it's just kind of nearby it, but it's cool that they are paying attention to stuff like that now. Anomaly. Alright, so Colossal Impact Crater. We're going to go ahead and research that. We're going to save this for later. <coughs> irregularities in the energy emission pattern of the star. And we've got uh, Kabir Sundaram is our uh, scientist. He's a roamer, wanderer, nomad, vagabond. Call him what you will. Um, which, by the way, I rewrote that entire song um, to be about the Roman Empire and performed it at PDXCon Karaoke, which is floating around on Twitter somewhere if you want to look it up. Massive Crater. Um, yeah, we've seen that one before. That's not new. It'd be kind of nice, like, kind of how Magic, like, or like a collectible card game will tell you what, what uh, expansion set a card is from with a little icon. It'd be cool if they did Distant Stars events have a different icon on them so you know to pay attention to them. So on Alpha Centauri 3, we'll lean, we're going to lean heavily into the role play here, um, which is a continental world with low gravity and high quality minerals. Um, it is uh, continental, looks ripe for colonization. It seems to be teeming with alien life. Um, we know at least for a fact that there are kelp here. I'm not sure what else, but discovery of kelp would be pretty significant in terms of the humanity's search for the answer to the question of whether or not we're alone. I think it'd be nice to know that there's at least kelp out there somewhere. Uh, none of them are sapient. It's likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. It's kind of a big assumption to make if we're thinking about this RP-wise, but... Uh, not that big of an assumption to make if you are familiar with Stellaris at all. I'm actually going to pause this real quick so I can go grab a decongestant so I'm not coughing through the entire, th entire episode. Alright, got some honey lemon tea and we're back. So hopefully I can uh, explore the galaxy without hacking up along would probably be the best, the best course of action. So we are going to commit to the Habitable World long. Survey. Um, 
And uh, Scientist has gained new skills. He is now up to level 2. Which means it would only take him a, baz a bajillion years uh, to research that anomaly and not a, a uh, bazillion, which everyone knows a bazillion is more than a bajillion. Um, so we've got some industrial wastelands and some sprawling slums on Earth we need to deal with. Probably products of before we became the enlightened society that we are now. Um, those are those are relics relics of our uh, our less harmonious past. Um, I think I'm going to go with discovery first. I kind of like the idea that we're going to get a scientific jump on things. And that anomaly chance this early on is always great because it, it means we're going to get to see more new cool events quicker. And it means that our uh, starting areas are going to have more resources in general. So I'm going to go ahead and finish Still building mining stations. Completed. Alpha Centauri has been surveyed. So we're going to go survey this. Survey this. Survey this. I was trying to remember what the follow button for science ships are because sometimes I really just like to... Um, follow a science ship around. Can't remember what that hotkey is, though. Is it Q? There we go. It's Q. I picked the, uh, mammalian ships rather than the humanoid ships just because I think their industrial look fits kind of the theme of the United Syndicates a little bit more. Construction project Even though I do love the look of the, uh, um, humanoid ships. They're probably one of my favorite art-wise. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and send our construction ship to Alpha Centauri to start setting up some uh, worker-governed mining Research communes included. on these asteroids. We got some exoskeletons, which is great. Um, yeah, let's lean into robots. <coughs> Let's get some, some fully automated luxury gay space communism going on here. Oh, it's not within our borders yet because we have to build a star base. Yep. TJ's not even remembering mechanics from the last expansion. <laughs> That's how long it's been since... Uh... System I, did play, I did play a little bit of uh, Distant Stars at, um, for like... Seriously, 20 minutes at uh, Paradox Con, but the thing is, when you're there as press, it's actually very hard to get time to actually sit down and play anything, because uh, you've got so many appointments, so many panels I had to cover. It's 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 a fun work trip, but it's definitely a work trip when you're there as, as press, uh, for sure. All right, build some mining stations. Need to start clearing some tile blockers on Earth. I'm gonna start with industry. We're gonna have a very industry forward development uh, philosophy. And when we're not doing anything else, we're just gonna follow our science ship around because I think, honestly, most of the time that's more fun than looking at the map, especially when we haven't met anybody yet. I like to enjoy this art. So, let's see. We have a relatively heavily armed vessel in orbit around the asteroid. Let's take a look. It'd be cool if we could actually see the heavily armed vessel in orbit around the asteroid. It seems like something that that, that paradox would add eventually. The scientists are leveling up. I'm keeping an eye on the sidebar just so, you know, we won't miss out on building stuff, so don't worry about that. I'm actually going to pull up Earth real quick. So I'd rather have you start working here first. <coughs> Pardon me. I also love that they added the futuristic hammer and sickle. It's like a torch and a mecha grabber arm or something. The armed vessel discovered in orbit is an abandoned military spacecraft called Nefrius Pride. 
Its light frame and evasion hardware suggest it was built for long-distance patrol missions, but it has since been retrofitted into a long-range stealth bomber. Records of the ship's comms reveal that it was hijacked by a rebel guerrilla on its way to perform a strike against a secret complex. We can... We can, uh, we can, uh, sympathize with that. Our, our forebears were considered rebel guerrillas back in the day. Uh, called the Zvan Labs. Said to hold a weapon so powerful it could win them the war when they were shot down. We've extracted the ship's de destination from its navigation drive. Um, so we can send a science crew or we have ne no need for such weapons. Uh, well, we're not pacifists. If this could help us uh, bring syndicalism to the rest of the galaxy, then we will Situation definitely search for the lab. Game. Let's see. Situation log. That is way over there. That is that is uh, a hella long way away, as they would they would say in uh, the Bay Area. So we will uh, we'll we'll put a pin in that. Contact report remnants. So, obviously, if we found an alien space bomber, there might must have been intelligent aliens at some point. Um, yeah, but potential equals continue to elude us. System survey concluded. So we'll continue following the ISS remembrance. It shouldn't be ISS. It should be uh, USC. I thought I changed our ship prefix in the Empire Builder, but I might have forgotten. Construction project concluded. That's fine. Administrative AI has finished researching. Um, we will go ahead and get exploration protocols so we can survey faster. Uh, heritage sites are nice. Unity is good to have. Looks like we can upgrade our lab on Earth to a bio lab if we want. We'll hold off for now, though. Strategic resource discovered. We found Aldar crystals, which give explosive weapon damage. Chipping these crystals causes the resulting splinter to expand and harden with explosive speed. All right, well, we will keep that in mind. Also, our construction ship is doing nothing. So I'm sure that uh, people have been yelling at me about that. To themselves. This is kind of an interesting ship design. Like, I always, when I look at sci-fi ships, I always wonder, like, what all the different parts functionally do. I guess maybe this front bow section is to protect the sensor antennae, possibly. Um, or it could be like a magnet loop kind of, like that's actually part of the sensor array itself, possibly. Let's see, survey speed is really good. Yeah, I think we'll too, too boldly go is the direction we're going to take. Construction project concluded. All right. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and annex Barnard Star. It's not very resource rich, but It's in a defensible location, and if we don't grab it, then it's going to be a great place for pirates to show up, so. Trying to expand intelligently here. Durantic crystals. They have rare reflective properties. Indicate they would greatly enhance the power and output energy of our weapons. So we, uh, this system has access to a lot of strategic resources. Four Aldar crystals and one Urantic crystals. So it looks like we'll be focusing on missiles and lasers <laughs> until further notice. System survey concluded. Holy crap! And Teldar crystals. 
Wow, that was, that's got to be like a scripted system. Like, that's too lucky to find all three of those in one place, right? That's really good. That's really, really good. I am quite pleased with that. Um, all right, let's see. Do we have enough minerals to start colonizing? We probably do, don't we? Let's go ahead and colonize this. Uh, most bang for our buck here. It's probably going to be to place the capital here. Um, keeping in theme, we're going to call our first uh, colony Bakunin. I don't think we'll name all of our planets after famous anarchists, but just because it's our first colony can't resist construction project concluded okay build a research station then get your ass over here and claim this for the united syndicates <laughs> that would be worth definitely going to war over if somebody wanted to uh oh i guess our science ship finished their queue Survey both directions here, because we want to know what potential threats might lie in close proximity to our uh, ultra-good strategic resources system. And then go ahead and wrap around this way, if you don't mind. Comrade Sandharam. Anomaly found. So, let's see, we're picking up life signs within the interior of an asteroid, which is quite interesting. Got a binary star system here. Yellow, white dwarfs. What manner of creature could live inside of an asteroid? Amazingly, while conducting their survey, the crew of the ISS Remembrance picked up several life signs coming from within the asteroid. It appears to be a colony of large, burrowing, worm-like lithovores within the rock, which has been riddled with tunnels. These unique life forms have somehow adapted to a life in the coldness of space. Very interesting. So we're now slightly energy negative just because we're maintaining a colony ship once uh, the colony starts uh, becomes self-sufficient. See, our chairperson has developed an eye for talent, which is very, that's a very good trait. So, I don't know if that's all of our leaders or just her that get plus one level cap and plus 20 experience gain. Let's see, so she has a skill cap of seven. Yeah, it's all of our leaders. Nice, that's a really good trait. That's a really, really good trait. So we're going to have some quite potent weapons. We have uh, Anomaly. all of the strategic resources to create potent combined arm ships here. Let's see. Picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Procyon system. Time to clear another tile blocker. We'll grab some food. Construction project concluded. All right, build all the mining stations, and then I'm going to have you go build a star base over here as soon as possible. ISS Remembrance crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded with the in the usual pattern of interference of the Procyon system. The signal is a song. A complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation to be precise, and the one and one that science officer Kabir Sandharam cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed this song remi remains unknown, though it is com its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside our galaxy. Interesting. Locker cleared. Nature will not stand in the way of progress. 
Nature will not stand in the way of progress, our advisor says. It's not exactly in keeping with our our empire's MO, since we are kind of eco-socialist. Uh, Initial leaning. colonization phase commencing. All right, the first colony ship has touched down at the mouth of a large river, Delta, on one of the several continents that can be found on Bakunin. Uh, so, yeah, awesome. Small tents, prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull. And we are uh, on our way to being an interstellar power. Exciting, System exciting times. Concluded. All right, so now we can queue up a star base here. Oh yeah, did I finish setting all of our like species stuff? I don't think I did. Citizenship full. Um, happiness plus 20. Yeah, we want to do a utopian abundance for sure. Military service is full, colonization allowed. No population controls, no migration controls. There we go. Research concluded. Make everybody very happy. We have <coughs> unlocked the ability to build robots, which we're gonna do. And we're gonna put them on as many mineral tiles as possible. Um, we're also going to research engineering facilities. And we're going to clear off another tile blocker. So we're actually going to stick this robot down here when he finishes building. Use our robots as efficiently as possible to decrease the need for human labor. I'm going to set up a... Construction uh, project concluded. Actually, since we don't have a great spot for it otherwise, I think I'm going to put our auto cathon monument here. And then this is going to be a power plant. I also, as usual, set habitable worlds and um, primitive sieves to, to very low, so just to reduce the overall amount of micro we have to do, keeping track of all of our planets. But it'll be the same for everyone, so. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna wait for that pot to grow. We're electing a new chairperson. who is a limited executive overseer of our uh, our uh, anarcho-syndicalist government. Uh, Jillian Fawcett has been re-elected. That's fine. Her mandate is... What is her mandate? Oh, it's on the situation log, isn't it? Orbital research. We'll get around to it. Oh, we can't build these mining stations yet because we don't have the tech to exploit those resources. Which is also blocking us off from getting these minerals. But at least they're within our borders. And holy crap. <coughs> is this the trap system? Anomaly found. The material of this asteroid is significantly different from its neighbors. Let's take a look. Construction project concluded. Different origin than the other bodies of this asteroid belt and should be investigated more clearly. Okay, so that's fine. You can have an inactive building for a little bit. It's a shit asteroid, literally. 
That is definitely not a new event. Definitely would not forget about the event where you find an asteroid made of fossilized poop. Okay, I don't think this is the trap system. I think that we can actually safely exploit this. Mining, research, system survey, starbase. New faction has been gaining traction, the Democratic League. Their members work for equality and justice for all citizens of our empire. Yeah, they should be extremely happy. <coughs> um, yeah, we don't, <coughs> don't really have the influence to spare to promote them right now, and we're already pretty egalitarian. All right, I did crank up the gateways and wormholes, which I don't normally do. So it looks like we've found an ancient subspace gateway. Where is our science ship? There we go. Oh, it's an L gate. Holy shit. We found an L gate within like the first 11 years of the game. <laughs> That's perfect. That's like this This playthrough was like designed for me to be able to show off uh, the new expansion mechanics. Okay. An ancient subspace gateway has been located near BX779 Singularity. It appears to have been built entirely by microscopic nanites of an unknown design. This particular gateway shows signs of having been altered at some point after its initial construction. Its connection to the rest of the network has been severed. Instead, the only valid destination is an uncharted group of stars just beyond our galaxy that has been designated the L Cluster by our astronomers. Although the gateway emits a faint power signature, it has been deliberately locked in some kind of maintenance loop that prevents activation. Until we find some way of aborting this process, the L Cluster will remain beyond our reach. Situation log. All right. So, uh, we need to, uh, project collect some Elgate insights, it looks like. Uh, we lack the necessary insight in subspace mechanics that govern the use, their use to lift this lockdown. Alright. Exciting, exciting times.